Welcome back everyone, this is Zombie Kids Rule, and this will be part two uh, of a, of a multi-part uh, tutorial series on dialogue options for RPG Maker MZ. Um, hopefully you'll watch my first video, the very first video, uh, part one, and in that I had described a little bit about my background, which is not, you know, it's, it's limited, um, and what I'm trying to do here is just provide information to other users like me who are learning RPG Maker MZ and they're searching for tutorials and they're searching for things that are specific to what they want to do and um, you know I've watched a lot of tutorials since around December of 2021 I'm just learning RPG Maker MZ I've learned a lot and but you know there are gaps in when I look for things so as I build things to experiment if it looks like there might be some sort of gap I just haven't found something I'm gonna try to share that um, I will say that there is a very nice uh, tutorial on um, uh, a, 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 many of these things that I've done here that uh, I found after I had put this together, and it's on the uh, RPG Maker RPG Maker web um, site, and it's under their blogs. So there is a written blog tutorial that goes through a number of these options very very nicely. Um, it doesn't go through all of them. But, but that's another resource. So anyway, again, uh, in video one, I went through the simplest ones that I had first built. Um, this little guy down here who is basically, he says one thing. We, we, we told him to say one thing, and that's what he says over and over again. And then this little lady here, which is duplicated, but just two different ways of doing it, she says four progressive things. So it, it, it lends the appearance that she... Uh, remembers talking to us and then um, she will ignore us because you know we did something and she's unhappy with us so she'll ignore us so that's in video one and as I said uh, really this is only limited by your willingness to put in the effort uh, and your imagination because even though I usually am only showing uh, about four or five samples of text in these options uh, you could do 10 you could do 20 you could do 30 uh, you could do however many you wanted as far as putting in your investment and uh, the other thing I will say is is that as I'm preparing to do these videos I'm actually uh, you know improving on what I did before because I realize having learned more that hey I don't have to do it that way I can actually do it a little differently um, and it gets the same result so it saves some lines of uh, of your events so here we go just like I did with part one I'm going to show you um, this uh, NPC this time and just this one because it's random dialogue so this NPC is going to basically say random things and um, there is always a random chance of what they will say after the first encounter so you know if you only have four choices you're going to end up repeating things but if you have 25 choices then the chances of this NPC saying the same thing twice in a row of course is going to be uh, you know much more less likely so here we go I will demonstrate what I did and then I'll show you the event pages of how I did it so we're going to go to this guy here first and when we click on him, he will turn to face us. And he is titled the random repeater. And the first thing he's going to do is always, he's going to say the first greeting. Because I want him to say something uh, specific the first time. So it says, hello, welcome to this tutorial. And then he's going to say a farewell. Don't be a stranger. Now, when I select him again, he is going to choose from, or I should say, the event will choose from four different things to say for a greeting and four different things to say for a farewell. So we just keep bumping into each other, don't we? Don't be a stranger. Click on him again. How long will you be in town? Don't be a stranger. So he just repeated the farewell twice in a row. How long will you be in town? That's a repeat. Good luck on your adventures. That's new. We just keep bumping into each other. Feel free to stop by and chat anytime. That's new. We just keep bumping. So you'll see that they he obviously starts to repeat because there's only four choices. And when we go over here to this uh, option for how you can create that, it's the same thing. The first thing he'll say is always the same. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Good luck on your adventures. Now that is random. Actually, the farewell is random. Next time, how long will you be in town? Feel free to stop by. We just keep bumping into each other. Don't be a stranger. We just keep bumping in. Don't be a stranger. How long will you be in town? Later, dudes. And so the more we click on him, 
he will choose from four different random options each time. And again, if I was making this for my game, I would make it more options, so there would be more variety and less chance of, of duplication. So how do we do this one? So the first option is just one event page, and again, we're going to use a variable here, uh, whereas the second option, we can do it without a variable. And, you know, very similar to the previous events, we have our event image. We don't really care about the movement at this point because I'm not doing anything fancy. These are not fancy videos. <laughs> These are just bare bones, uh, make them as I can videos. Um, nothing surprising here. This is all the same. So the event, when you first uh, select the NPC, when you first trigger through the action button, um, the game is going to check a variable. Talked to NPC2 is equal to zero. If that's true, which it will be when you start the game, he's going to say this static dialogue because I want him to say the same thing, you know, each game when, when we start. And then we're going to increase that variable by one. And then because um, I we've increased the variable by one, if we just drop down to this next section here, um, this would be true. NPC, uh, talk to NPC2 would be one, which means he would then say something else, and I don't want that to happen. So instead, we're going to jump to a label. And so I set a label down in the section for the random farewell. And so it will, the first time we talk to him, it will jump down to that label of farewell. It will then randomly determine a, a, a variable number, or I should say a variable of random number will have a random number generated. And then to, based on the result of that random number, it will determine what the NPC says. And the nice thing about this is, is unless you need, unless the game absolutely needs to save that random, uh, that variable result, you can reuse that variable over and over and over and over again. Um, so he, we determine what he says as a farewell, we end, and then uh, the event exits. The next time we talk to that NPC, this will not be true anymore. Talk to NPC2 will not equal zero. So it will skip this whole portion. It will go here instead. And it will say, if talk to NPC2 is, uh, two is one, which is, that will be true, it will then do the random uh, roll to determine what the NPC is going to say. And we don't change the variable after this because we don't need to. It's always going to go to this value section. And then it will determine what the NPC says based on the result of the roll. And then it will immediately go to the farewell, and it will determine the farewell, and then it will exit. Um, an improvement that I, had, I didn't realize when I first made this was that after each one of these, I put a jump to label farewell because I was thinking when I finished whatever he was going to say, I would have to jump to that label to skip these other options, which is not true, because it will check if it, uh, when it does its random number, it will check this one, and if it's not a one, it'll go down and check this one, and then check this one, and then check this one, and it will check them all, and it'll only do the one that's correct it, that where the value is true is true and then it'll automatically go down to farewell so i remove those as uh when i was doing this so that's the first option right um and i will also mention here i said in, in part one that i assume that you already know the basics of how to add uh event commands into your uh events how to create new event pages um you know where you you know copy event page new event page uh and things like that and if you just double double select which is what i do it opens up the command options for you to do whatever it is you want and if you write uh right click you can edit any of your commands and and do whatever it is you want to do um so hopefully if you haven't watched basic tutorials you you will um, you know, go over and watch some of the many basic tutorials that are available, uh, available that talk about variables and switches and that sort of thing. So that's the first way to do it. The second way to do it is, again, if you wanted to conserve a variable and just not use a variable to, to you know, trigger that change, you could do it with event pages. So uh, on this one, we have the same beginning, right, with the same setup in the beginning for the NPC. Page one in the beginning is the, is the uh, highest page with the conditions that's met. There are no conditions automatically met. When you when you activate that NPC, uh, he will say the one standard text, and then it will turn on Control Self Switch B. 
Um, we're doing that because we want to skip page two, which is control cell switch A, which is the random greeting. And we don't want to do the random greeting after we talk to this person the first time. So we're going to bypass page two and we're going to go directly to page three, which is the random farewell. And so the self switch condition is B and uh, this will uh, do the random farewell just like it did in the other um, option for creating this. Uh, you do your, your variable and then it determines which one of these is correct and it will present that and then we're going to turn self switch B off to deactivate this page and we're going to turn self switch A on so that the next time when we exit this event the next time we talk to this NPC page two will be the highest page with the, where the conditions are met and that will trigger the random uh, greeting. I should also point out that on page three here, we ch I changed the trigger to auto run. And I did that because when we start with page one and we set control switch B to on, this page will be triggered. However, if we left it at um, what we had here, action button or something, the page won't run until we select the NPC again. And we don't we don't want that. We want the NPC to immediately do the farewell. We don't want to select them again to say the farewell. Because if we did that, when you go back to talk to them, they'll just say farewell and be done. And that seems weird. So if we set it to auto run, this page will immediately run when after we uh, do select uh, uh, self switch B on, it'll switch to this page, it'll immediately run. Then it'll turn itself off and then it'll activate page two. And page two is when we come back and we talk to this NPC again, and it will basically say, okay, what's my random number? I'm gonna set a my variable random number to a random number of one to four. It will decide, okay, what do I present to the player as the text? And then it will turn self switch B on, which just like it did before, it will auto run, say the random farewell, and then it'll reset itself to have page uh, to run. So as, as many times as we interact with this NPC on either of these options, they will continue to repeat the four same things we told them to do uh, until we changed it somehow, right? Uh, and again, you could have many, 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 many different choices here. So those are the two different ways that um, we did. I did the random repeating. Again, coming up, uh, we're going to use common events. Uh, we're going to use arrays. We're going to use uh, text as uh, in a variable to, to show different options to, again, add more flavor, uh, call the NPC by name and things like that. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, uh, you know, please leave a comment. Uh, you know, please, um, you know, if, if you want to be alerted when uh, I add more videos, which I'm going to try to do fairly frequently, uh, you know, you can subscribe, you can uh, get notifications. Uh, if you have any comments at all, please, please let me know. Leave them in the comments box. Uh, if you have other resources, if you found something that is is better for this for for dialogue, um, you know, drop a link in there and and let everyone know. Because the whole point behind this is to the more tutorials that are out there that hopefully are helpful, the more likely someone will be able to find something they need. So thank you very much, folks, for your attention. I hope this helped people, uh, and I'll try to get another video out very very soon uh, about the next option uh, in our dialogue choices. Thank you very much, and have a great day.